My name is Casey Ramirez. Fred and I have been teaching the class together for several years. You might hear some background noise. Uh, my baby is here at home. I'm happy to help teach this course and I'm gonna be wrapping up our uh, job search discussion today. We're going to talk about Boolean search uh, as well as a couple other key pointers that will help you be efficient and successful in your job search. My background, I am a technical consultant for an insurance company. Prior to that, I worked for Apple and did training and technical support, did some interviewing. Uh, so I, I bring the nerd background and I'm happy to pass that along. Boolean search, maybe it's something you've heard of. Usually in our classes, quite a few hands go up as, for people who are not familiar with this or who have not used it. And I can tell you, I use this in my normal life all the time, all day, every day. This is not just for job search. This is for uh, any searching that you are doing on any uh, internet platform or computer software. Boolean search is the language that a computer uses when it is understanding a search. It's a type of search allowing users to combine keywords with operators. So. If you understand how to speak the computer's language, uh, you will get a search that more closely aligns with the results that you're hoping for. I go in order of importance here. So the top one is the one that I use the most, searching a phrase. So if your uh, prospective job title is more than one word, so let's take computer technician as an example, if you go to indeed.com and you type in computer technician, you'll get a ton of postings, um, but a lot of them might mention, um, you know, mechanical technician or computer programmer or, uh, you know, things that use one of the words, but not both together. And so then it becomes frustrating. I, I know I've had this, I'm wondering if you have too, scrolling through results, finding one out of 10 that actually are anything you're interested in applying for. So let's get that closer to what you really need. If you are searching for computer technician jobs, you can surround that phrase with quotation marks. So you'll type in quotation, computer technician, quotation marks, and now when you do your, your search, um, the software will understand that you are only interested in results that include that exact phrase. So postings for uh, mechanical technicians, postings for computer programmers, those aren't gonna pop up. You're only gonna get results that use the exact phrase computer technician. You can imagine this for lots of different job postings. Uh, kindergarten teacher. Um, you could imagine this for, as I mentioned here, forklift driver, um, food buyer. <laughs> so as long as you can put the quotation marks, you will find the exact phrase and your job postings will really line up with what you really want uh, so that you're not wasting time. You can imagine that you might use that all the time in regular life. If you are doing any sort of a Google search, instead of just putting in a phrase or a series of words, put quotation marks around the phrase and Google will understand that it should only provide you pages that use that exact phrase. So real world example, you have a song in your head, you have one line that you can remember, but for the life of you, you cannot remember who the artist is and you cannot remember the name of the song. <laughs> uh, so all you have to do is type that lyric, that line into Google, put quotation marks before and after, and the song will pop up first off because Google will only provide you results with that exact line, that exact phrase. Your song will pop up and <laughs> you can actually find it instead of being stuck with one line running through your head over and over. I also use this quite often for searching my email. So if you keep emails in your inbox and you find that you're being asked at work maybe the same questions uh, or, you know, in life, PTA, who knows what, um, you know, you don't have to keep writing the same information over and over again. Uh, if I know someone has asked me a question before, I will just search my inbox and I will put in the phrase uh, and I'll put quotation marks around it and it will pop right up and I can just copy and paste or forward. Um, this is just a trick that I use all the time and I think you should be using it too. That's how to search a phrase. Next, let's talk about finding a posting that does not mention a word. So an example here would be, let's say I am 
looking for a teaching job, but I am looking for middle school and high school. I'm not looking for elementary. So in that instance, I could search the word teachers, space, minus sign, elementary. Indeed or LinkedIn or Simply Hired or whatever platform you're using, it will understand that uh, you should be getting job postings that mention the word teacher, but do not include the word elementary anywhere in the content. There you go. Now you're going to see postings that have to do with other teaching positions. Uh, communications. Let's say I'm looking for a job in communications, um, but a lot of the job postings I'm seeing all require master, master's degrees. They all seem to be higher level. It's frustrating. I want to see postings that are more applicable to me. I could search communications space minus masters. Now the platform is going to understand that I should see job postings that mention the word communications, but do not include the word masters. So that could be very helpful. Now a word of caution here, with great power comes great responsibility. You can go too far with these search tools. So here's an example. Let's say I would like to be a facilitator but I don't want to be a facilitator in the medical world. Maybe I'm not interested in working at a hospital or, you know, a doctor's office facilitating classes. Okay, so if I search facilitator minus medical, okay, now I'm going to see facilitator jobs that don't include the word medical. But what if a job posting had just been talking about medical benefits? Now I'm not going to see it. So you want to Experiment with this, play around, and just be cautious about excluding words that might legitimately be in a posting that you would be interested in. All right, those are the first two. Let's talk about number three, or. So uh, I don't know if you've had this experience. I know I did a couple years ago when I was searching around. Uh, the same job is often called two, three, four different things. So um, it can be very helpful to be able to craft a search where um, you are looking for either of two options. So let's take trainer and facilitator. Mean the same thing, it's the same job, but some companies call it trainer and some call it a facilitator. I don't want to miss something just because they call it something else. So I can go to Indeed uh, and I can do a job search and I can put in trainer space or it's best to do it in all caps. That's kind of the original Boolean language. Um, and so that's going to be the most compatible across all systems. So do OR in caps, space, facilitator. Now Indeed understands that I should get job postings that include the word trainer or the word facilitator. Now I won't miss something that possibly matches what I am trying to apply for. You can see secretary or receptionist as another example, and I feel like almost any job nowadays has multiple uh, names. So hopefully that could be useful to you. And Boolean logic, Boolean search techniques, these can be combined. So uh, let's say for instance, there's my little girl. Let's say for instance, you want to search two different phrases. So now I am interested in being a computer trainer or computer facilitator. So I can do quotation marks, computer trainer, quotation marks, space, or in all caps, space, quotation marks, computer facilitator, quotation marks. Okay, so now Indeed would understand that it should give me results where either the phrase computer trainer or the phrase computer facilitator are listed. I'm going to get very specific results that match my criteria. And as Fred taught you earlier in this class, as you craft these searches, this is not something I'm expecting you to do every time. You're going to build a search that is finding results that are really applicable, that you're excited about, and then you're gonna save it. You're gonna put in your email address and you're gonna save that search so that it comes into your inbox every day. Um, you're gonna get great postings that align with what you want. You can use easy apply to go ahead and get quick wins and apply for three, four, five things right off the bat in the morning that all match up with what you're interested in. This is gonna save you a whole lot of time. All right, last one is using the word and, very similar to or, 
and is going to force the search to make sure that both words are included. So it's not a phrase. I'm not saying that I need both words to be together. I'm saying that both words must be somewhere in the post. So uh, teacher and elementary is an example. They might not say in the posting anywhere elementary teacher. So if I try to search just that phrase, it might not work as well possibly, but they might use both of those words somewhere in the, pace, in the posting. Um, marketing and masters is another example. You could probably think of a lot of these. And so if you wanna make sure that both words are included somewhere in the job posting, you can type them and include the word and in all caps in between, and you will be communicating that to the job platform. Okay, happy hunting. Uh, I encourage you to try to put that into practice as soon as possible. The way this sticks is that you start using it. So if I were assigning homework, it would be that in the next day or two, you experiment with these techniques and try to craft one to two searches um, in Indeed or LinkedIn um, or a job search platform of your choice and uh, save them so that you can become more efficient. And feel free to start using them in your normal life too. Applying for a job, uh, this is a, a little bit of technique, a little um, bit of reminder around this digital world that we're living in. So when you are applying for a job, a couple of, piece of pieces of advice, complete every field, even if you feel like you're answering the same thing more than once. Don't say something like, see answer to number three or something like that. Your answers are going into a computer system and they're all being broken up. If someone is looking at you, they're not necessarily going to look at your answers in line item. They're going to be looking at everybody's answer to number three, for instance. If you don't fill things out completely, it's much more likely that you'll be filtered out from a computer system and you'll never make it to the point of talking to an actual human. Resume formats. Uh, this was likely talked about in the resume class, but I like to go over it here as well. It's a good idea to have a, uh, at least two different um, file types for your resume. Um, <laughs> so if you are emailing your resume, let's say a recruiter or a friend or a company asks you to directly send them your resume, I would recommend you use a PDF in that instance. PDFs are small and they're very compatible. Uh, you can ensure that your resume looks exactly the way you intend and that it will open on any computer system. Uh, however, if you are using a platform like Indeed um, or, or you know, perhaps applying online and they tell you to upload a resume, if you are uploading, you should be using a doc format, uh, a Word file format. That's more readable. A PDF is really like a snapshot of your resume, so it loses all of the individual characters. Um, and that makes it harder for a bot, a web bot, to scroll and read it and capture information and make it searchable. So anytime you're uploading online, use a document format because that's readable, all the characters are there, and a bot that is crawling will be able to gather lots of keywords that you know, could cause you to be found when an employer is doing some searches. Next, I think it's very important to be ready at any time. You never know when you're gonna get a call or an opportunity or a networking uh, moment. So have your resume and cover letter available and have references ready to go at a moment's notice. It, there are so many ways to do this now. Um, you can have uh, iCloud, you can have Dropbox, you can have Google Drive, um, you could use a flash drive, you could email yourself. <laughs> there are so many choices. So um, you should use something so that those files are available to you and you could easily email them to someone upon request. And your references should know that there's a potential they might be called um, if that were to come up. But this way you can be first in line and jump on opportunities that might come along. Need practice applying because everything is computerized now. If you're not as comfortable on a computer, it can really slow you down and make uh, the job application experience frustrating. So I have some advice here on how you could get more comfortable. There are actually 
um, steps out there. There are video tutorials, and I even have here a, a website that is a practice uh, job application. So you can practice your computer navigation going from field to field, how to properly populate text boxes, uh, choices, radio fields. This just depends on your level of comfort, but if this would be helpful to you, I wanted to have it here. Uh, you can use these links to go get some practice. A word of advice on digital communication. So it's best to use professional, efficient language. Uh, you don't need to be overly flowery, descriptive, using five or six syllable words that you would never use in real life. Uh, in especially the corporate world, what is highly valued is how simply and effectively you can get your message across. So that should apply your, to your resume, that should apply to cover letters, written communications. Um, just be yourself and uh, you know, be professional but get your message across as effectively as you can. Um, reference prior communication or contact. Try to keep that through line that you might have with a, a person or a company. Even though it's digital communication, it can be a little tempting to not be as grammatically correct because that's what we tend to do in text messages and emails. Ignore that impulse. You wanna be very grammatically correct. Use all appropriate sentence cases, um, you know, there are so many applicants for jobs, they often look for reasons to knock folks out. So don't let poor grammar be a knockout for you. Um, Reread for proofing and to check tone. Sometimes it's hard to um, see how your tone might be coming across in written communication. Um, I would highly recommend that, especially at the beginning of a job search, after you've written a couple of things, a cover letter, have a friend reread and just make sure that it's coming across the way you intend so that, uh, you know, you don't have any surprises around that front. Don't use email as an excuse to avoid personal contact. This, depending, especially my introverts out there, uh, this can be really tempting, <laughs> but uh, that personal contact or, or phone call or networking can be what really lands you a job. So know when to use email and when not to. And remember, email is not private, especially in a corporate world. So um, don't write something in an email that you wouldn't be okay with other people reading. This is just a little tip from me to you. Uh, you know, you never know when an email you send is going to get forwarded to another group of people. You, if you're complaining about a recruiter to an HR person, you never know who's going to see what. Just, uh, you know, be as nice and kind as possible, and that won't be something that comes and bites you later. Final piece of advice, job tracking. You have learned a lot of good advice uh, in the seminar and you're about to learn a whole lot more in the other classes. You are gonna be applying for a lot of jobs. That's the way this works. You apply for quite a bit and then uh, you're gonna find some that work out. You're gonna need to keep track of your progress. Uh, so do that in whatever way you're most comfortable with. I myself liked using an Excel spreadsheet and I have a link here to a template. You could use Microsoft Word, you could track in an email, you could literally grab a legal pad and jot it down on a piece of paper, but whatever works for you, keep track of the company's job titles, a brief description of the job, dates, contact details, uh, any notes specific to the job. Uh, keep that uh, tracked and keep that close at hand because Jobs want to believe that you are the most cash, passionate candidate possible. They, they want to believe that you are only looking at their posting. <laughs> so this is a little bit of, a little bit of magic. You can uh, keep notes and that way when you get a phone call, you'll be able to speak specifically and passionately about whatever the job is and uh, it will come across to the recruiter or the person hiring um, that you are very focused and committed and passionate to their particular job posting, which is what they want. So, so uh, you know, do, do your best. 
Otherwise it can get messy. You can accidentally mention things that related to a different job or you might just come across as you know, lost or, or not remembering particular elements and you become a less compelling candidate. So uh, keep track of those items. It, this helps you also just feeling, feel that sense of accomplishment, make sure that you are um, staying accountable to posting for the appropriate number of jobs. You can use this and share this in accountability groups, which we like to recommend. It's good to walk with a group of people and not alone in this season. Um, and finally, this can help you track trends. So I know in my own background, when I was looking around at jobs, I was deciding between a couple different positions. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted my next step to be. I was interested in instructional design. I was interested in training, facilitating. Uh, so I made resumes for both. I uh, applied for both kinds of jobs and then I tracked everything. And over time as I was tracking, I realized I was getting a lot more traction with my facilitator training postings uh, and not with instructional design. I wasn't getting as much. So what that tells me is that Either I needed to tweak that resume, that cover letter, those set, that set of skills, or I'm just not currently a compelling candidate for that particular position, and it's in my best interest to put my energy toward the facilitation. So uh, that could be very, very helpful and illuminating for you. I would highly encourage that you keep track of the work that you are doing. All right, I hope you were able to uh, glean some helpful tidbits, pieces of advice that you can put into practice. As I was mentioning earlier, uh, this is only as good as you use it and apply it. So uh, if I were giving homework, this is my moment. Uh, really, uh, you know, think about what you took away from this class and think about two to three realistic next steps that you could take. Don't try to, you know, eat the whole apple at once. Let's do a bite at a time. Uh, I have a couple of examples here. You could create a profile on one or two job sites. You could create job search alerts using your new Boolean logic skills that you have. You could research one to two companies that you're interested in so that you can speak very intelligently as you are able to get interviews with them. You can review information on applying for a job so that you can become uh, more effective on that, those computer platforms. You could also set up a job tracking spreadsheet or whatever tool is appropriate for you so that you can start tracking all of your great work. So pick one or two things, start now <laughs> in the next day or two, put them into practice. And then as you get comfortable, you can add to your toolbox the other skills that we mentioned today. I wish you luck, I'm praying for you. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure this out together. Um, we're happy to help. Keep in mind that Willow Creek has lots of great resources and our Needs Met website as well as employment counseling. So come visit us. Let us know how we can help, but Godspeed on your employment journey.